guys, welcome back to my channel. We are going back to a sweet dish this week. Um, my boyfriend Greg is turning 32 this Sunday, so I'm going to make him a birthday cake. I've always wanted to try to do those recipes where it has you turn a box cake into a bakery cake or improve upon the box cake as much as possible. And there's a couple different ways that you can do that. I googled it earlier today and there's so many different things that you can do. So we're just going to try all of them in one and see how it turns out. Hopefully it's delicious. I'm not sure how much I'm going to need. I do have two boxes just in case. I wanted to make a round cake and I don't have any regular round pans. What I do have is two Springform cheesecake pans. My oven's preheated. I have two Springform cheesecake pans, so we're gonna try to use that. Um, I used to work at a bakery a few years ago and I remember them lining the pans with parchment circles. So I went ahead and cut some circles out of parchment paper. I also cut strips to go around the edges of the pan so that it doesn't stick that way. I know the spring forms make it a little easier anyway, but I feel like I usually have really bad luck with my cake sticking to the pan, so we're just gonna go gung-ho and line everything. One of the tricks that the internet Google machine said to make a box cake better is adding um, a half a cup each of flour and sugar. So we're gonna do that. So it says to add that to the cake mix. So I'm just gonna start off with one box at first and if I need the second one, we'll do a second batch. By the way, I went with the yellow cake mix. Um, I remember working at the bakery. They said that yellow cake is not a thing and it's like the best box cake mix there is, so. I don't know what they're talking about. All right, so half a cup, half a cup of flour. And a half a cup of sugar. I'm just gonna mix it with my whisk attachment really slowly. All right, and then the next Step. It says to follow the instructions on the back of the box. It says we need one cup of water, a third cup of vegetable oil, and three eggs, um, but modify that slightly. So it says instead of the cup of water to use a cup of milk, but I needed half and half for the icing that I'm gonna use on this cake. So I chose not to buy milk and I just bought half, a bigger thing of half and half. So I'm gonna use a half a cup of half and half. I feel like cream would probably be make it, probably make it even richer, so. I don't see how that could be bad. We will see. And then instead of the third cup of vegetable oil, it says to use a third cup of melted butter. So that is here. And then for the three eggs, it says to, the recipe that I saw was for a cake mix that required two eggs. This one requires three, so a little different the one for two eggs it says to use either three or four instead so I figured that's about double so I am just gonna double this recipe so it's three large eggs so I used six I do have medium eggs I accidentally bought medium ones the last time I got eggs so it's probably more around five large eggs so we'll see how that goes I didn't whisk them probably should have but they'll mix up in there and then the next step says to add a half cup of sour cream and that just adds um, a richer flavor and texture. There's a half cup of sour cream. And then the last um, little trick that I saw was just to add some vanilla extract. So that's pretty easy. I just guesstimate. I don't think vanilla is a super strong flavor. So just kind of pour in however much I'm feeling. We're just gonna mix all of that up and see how it turns out. As always, scrape the sides of your bowl, otherwise you'll get like pieces of flour in there or pieces of sour cream, whatever stuck to the edges of the bowl. I really need to get one of those mixers that has the little rubber thing on the side of it so that I don't have to do this. Oh yeah, there was so much powder on the bottom of the bowl. Okay, I think that the batter is all mixed. It's pretty smooth. Um, I turned my machine up to high just for the last couple minutes so that it would break up those clumps of um, cake mix. 
so that way it's nice and smooth. It gave it a little bit of a whip with the eggs, so it's gonna be nice and airy and bubbly. This recipe on the back of the box says to preheat your oven to 350 for a metal or a glass pan or 325 for a dark or coated pan. Unfortunately, one of my pans is dark and one of them is light, so I kind of just heated it to 335 and <laughs> we'll see what happens. I'm not sure. Um, I do know that it affects cheesecakes very much so. Um, I burnt the bottom of one of my cheesecakes in this darker pan and the top or the cheesecake part wasn't as solid as I wanted it to be which was really unfortunate. So I do know that this one is the one I need to use for cheesecake in the future. All right, so I have these pre-cut circles. What I did, if you don't have any circles pre-cut or if you don't have, like if you haven't bought those circles that they sell, you can cut your own out of regular parchment paper. Luckily with these pans, the, this part comes off and I just closed it so it was the tightest size laid it on the parchment paper and use a pencil and drew a circle and then um just do a little bit of math and figure out what the circumference of that would be or if you have like one of those garment measuring tapes that are really soft and flexible you can measure around the inside and that will get you the length that you need for the strips so we're going to put a circle in each one of these um, as you can see, I got them off of the roll, so they're a little curly. So I'm just putting them curly side down so that they stay flat. Actually, I forgot. Um, it says you're supposed to use, um, you're supposed to grease your pans first so that, I'm assuming so these don't slide around, but I don't really know. So I'm gonna do that just a little bit. And then I'll just smear it around in there so that ready to go. I don't even know if this is a necessary step. I don't know if it's going to hurt it or help it, but we're going to go for it. It'll, I know it'll help keep the side pieces of parchment paper up on the sides while I pour the cake batter in, so that will be nice. So now, curly side down. And these also have a curly side that you can kind of see. And I'll put that towards the outside. Alrighty, getting nervous. I will say that most of the cakes I've made in the past like seven years have been made at 7,000 or 8,000 feet in elevation. We used to live in Mammoth and it's terrible. You can't bake anything up there. So this will be interesting. Now I think we're at like 300 feet or something above sea level. Yeah, I have made one cake down here since we've lived down in this area and it was a carrot cake. And those are like the most temperamental cakes that ever exist because there's so much moisture in the carrots. It was not good. It didn't turn out well. It <laughs> exploded all over the oven, but I salvaged what I could and it was, a no case success, not like blow us out of the world. Okay, I don't know how to do equal portions. Let's see. I feel like I need a measuring device. I'm gonna use this handy dandy mug that I got from I think the Dollar Tree when I was in college. I think it'll work. All right, so about one mug full will go in this pan. I don't know how much this cake is gonna rise either. It'll probably rise a lot because there's a lot of eggs. I also wanted to have a little bit extra so that I could make a cupcake and taste it before I eat the cake, before I serve the cake to Greg because don't wanna give him a terrible excuse for a birthday cake. All right, the rest of that's gonna be a cupcake. Let me see if I have a cupcake pan. All right, I've got one of these little half heifers. Um, I don't know if I have any cupcake liners though. I have these jumbo liners, but I don't have a jumbo cupcake pan. And they're a little big. I think I'm just gonna do it because I don't wanna clean the pan. I know it's not gonna be shaped well because of this whole configuration, but it'll get the job done. I just wanted to taste it. This one isn't for presentation, those ones are. Okay, what does it say about baking times? I think these are two nine inch pans. 
and it says 23 to 28 minutes. Cupcakes says 18 to 21. So I'll just take the cupcake out a little earlier because it won't take as much time to cook all the way through that amount of cake. But these two puppies are gonna take a little bit longer. So 23 to 28. I worked at that bakery for a very short time and I was like the coffee person. So I wasn't doing the baking. I was just an observer. Learned what I could. And I don't know if you know, I'm planning on decorating this cake also. I don't know how to decorate a cake for a 32 year old man, but hopefully he likes it. Okay, those are spread out. I am really nervous to put these in the oven and see how they turn out. I swear, like every time this goes wrong, every time. In they go. readjust my racks all right so they're all on the same level so I don't think it would matter if you had the convection on or not I know that if you have a conventional oven the heat element is on the bottom so anything you put on the bottom is gonna cook faster or crispier on the bottom so you have to be really careful with that okay I'm gonna set my timer for the time is that is necessary for that cupcake which is 18 minutes And then that will go off and I will take the cupcake out and restart the timer. It says from five to 10, so I don't know. I'll probably set it for seven and then check it with a toothpick. And if it's not done, I'll keep it in for the full 10. Okay, I just took the cakes out of the oven. Um, I can tell that the darker pan did have a little bit of an effect on it just because it shrank a little bit more. I don't know if you can tell from here, but um, I don't think it was that big of a deal. Well have to find out once we take it out of the pan. Um, I'm gonna let these cool down to room temperature and then I'm gonna stick them in the freezer so that um, I can decorate them on Saturday. It's Thursday now and Greg's coming home tomorrow for one day off and then he goes back to work Saturday. So I'll use that day to decorate them, make the icing, decorate them, and then um, we'll cut into it on Sunday on his actual birthday. Thanks for sticking around this far through the video. Um, next week we will continue with making the icing and decorating the cake for Greg's birthday. Um, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel or like this page so you can get notified for future videos. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, just leave a comment down below and I will respond promptly. Thanks again for watching and I will see you right here next week. Bye.